your box. Thank you so much. Here is part two of I Read Bridgerton in one week. This book is Eloise. So this is the first time we're back to a sister since Daphne. Obviously, Daphne was the first one to get married and then you're just looking at the stories of three men. So it's very different. You're kind of more in the thought process of the men. And now we're to Eloise. So book number five, sibling number five, Eloise, and she has always been a non-conventional. She didn't care about getting married. She wanted to be independent. She wanted to go to school. She wanted to learn whatever the guys are allowed to do, she wants to be able to do. She's just like empowerment 101. We love her. Um, but she kind of gets a bit of a shock when she finds out that Penelope, her best friend, married Colin and they are gonna be married. So Eloise and Penelope were always kind of gonna be like the non-married ones together and then Penelope goes off and get married. So Eloise kind of has a bit of a shock and you find out through this shock she decides to explore this lie, this secret she's been keeping for I think over a year it was. She's been writing letters to someone and so you find out that who she's been talking to. She runs off to see this person, which is obviously not allowed. Like you can't go places without a chaperone, let alone travel in the middle of the night and run away without telling your family where you're going. Obviously not a family this tight knit at all. Eloise's book was by far my least favorite. Not to be mean, but it just wasn't a page turner. It was very slow. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that because all the other books were like you couldn't stop reading you need to know what happened so it was actually kind of nice in the middle-ish to take a break from that and have a slower story but it was just too freaking slow and there was just i didn't love it even the scenes that were like passionate and fiery and you're like yeah she's running away like you're just like well, where are you going so you have to read it to get through the season and to know what happens, but it definitely slowed me down in terms of my like timeline of reading the books. This one took me probably as long to read as all of the other books combined because I just wasn't as into it. Sorry, Eloise, I still love you. And this is also, by the way, the only book where one of the siblings gets with someone who was, not who was previously married, that happens, but who has kids from a previous marriage. And this also kind of brings back the circle that we saw in season one with the cousin Marina. She comes in and out. I'm not gonna go back and explain her whole storyline, but she is involved in this book for those of you who have watched season one, which is kind of interesting. Um, and I did like the storyline they did with her character. I thought it made sense from what we've seen of her in season one to how they bring her back in book five. It's very true to her character. I'm just gonna give a spoiler alert. She passes away. She does. I'm not sure if I can say this without a trigger warning. Trigger warning. Um, she does take her own life, essentially. She attempts to, and in the end, it does end up killing her. And Eloise becomes involved in this through the letter she's sending and who she's speaking to. And she kind of comes back into Marina's life when Marina's no longer around if I can say that. I think that's good. So it's good. It's a good storyline. It has a lot of nice twists, but it didn't like carry me through in a like I need to know kind of way. So the next book is the book called When He Was Wicked and this is the story of Francesca. So the next sister, if you guys haven't noticed yet, yes their names are in alphabetical order. Anthony, Benedict, Colin, Daphne, Eloise Francesca and then we are going to see Gregory and Hyacinth right after these. So Francesca's story I loved because it was so unique, so different. I don't think I've ever read a book really with this storyline which says a lot because I've read a lot of books and what I loved about Francesca is, is that you don't start with her so much in the first year she's like introduced to society when she's young and her first love. You meet her when she's already married and in love and her book spans over years which they all do but hers is more so than the rest and basically you go through some rough rough shit um with her she unfortunately loses her husband who she really did 
care for, she did love. I wouldn't say it was one of those like passionate love stories like maybe the other siblings, but she really did care for her husband. She loved him. She was living a very happy life. Um, and unfortunately he passed away at a very young age. So the years go by and she it kind of comes back to her. She's starting to live a normal life again. She's starting to think about finding another husband because she is very young. And even though she's a widow, she definitely has a lot of years to live. She doesn't have kids yet. So that's something that is a big emphasis in this book. She really, really wants to be a mom. So you kind of see her start navigating just this, even just the thought process that she navigates as she tries to get through this and talking to her mom and her sisters for advice. I loved this book because it really got you through her whole thought process. And then the person she's with, you kind of see it coming, to be honest. You see it coming pretty much even from when her husband was alive. As a reader, you are definitely pointed in the direction of who she's going to end up with. And spoiler alert, she does end up with, I'm not sure if I should say it. I think I'm just going to say it. She does end up with her husband's cousin who is part of their life when they're married they're very close to three of them and he is equally grieving when she is and all stuff so you kind of see it coming and you kind of find out as you read that he this cousin um was in love with her pretty much the whole time through but he let his older and <laughs> better cousin have Francesca because that's the one that she chose but now they kind of have their own they kind of have their own go at life and it's really nice it's really sweet i love how they do it and yeah that's francesca's story it's a really sweet one this one had me turning the pages because you just wanna you just want to see her happy you want to see him happy they've both been through so much so this one was really well done and again it kind of brings back grief but all of these different stages of life are discussed in each book which i love because you're kind of getting a different side of characters because they're in different ages the next book is the story of Gregory, um, probably one of my favorites, probably. Gregory and Hyacinth both really surprised me because in the series, which is how I first, you know, was introduced to Bridgerton, was the Netflix series, and then I read the books afterwards. Um, in the TV series, you really don't see Gregory and Hyacinth all that much, they're like little kids running around in the background, but... I love their books and it's so nice because this one, the last two, Gregory and Hyacinth, are the ones that are completely left up to your imagination because the others, you kind of all know what they look like, their personalities, all of that. You have those visuals from the show, but for Gregory and Hyacinth, you really <laughs> have no idea. So Gregory's book was awesome. I loved it. It kind of is similar to Anthony's story in the way that he was after one girl and then fell in love with another. Um, so that kind of wasn't, I feel like I sound mean, but it wasn't the most original because we literally saw it a couple books earlier. Obviously, assuming that if you're reading Gregory's book, it's because you read all the ones beforehand. So you would know. Um, but it was still done so nicely and I loved the way that the best friends came out, the two girls who are best friends and just how like they genuinely have each other's back in the society and it's so cute. Um, so yeah, I really liked Gregory's story and I have to say something I love in all these books is that Julia Quinn, the author, oh my god, I didn't even name her until now. All these books are written by Julia Quinn. I will link her website down below. Um, she's amazing, but what I love about all of these books is that they have two epilogues, each of them. So epilogue one is like the recent future after the, the ending that the book ends at. But epilogue two is like years into the future and it varies for all of them. Gregory's, it's like, yeah, at least 10 years into the future because it's kid number eight. So that's gotta be at least between eight to 10 years into the future. Gregory and his wife having their kids in... I have to honestly say that the two epilogues were the best part of the entire book. So you obviously have to read the book to get there you have to understand what's going on because or else nothing would make sense. So I definitely recommend reading Gregory's. So good. Such a sweet, genuine story too. And something that's very dominant in the last three books of Francesca, Gregory, and Hyacinth. 
is that they're very much affected by their older siblings and the stories of their older siblings and what they've seen in their older siblings over the years. So it's nice because you as the reader know exactly what they're talking about because you've read them too. So the last book, the last book is the story of Hyacinth and her book very much on purpose, I would guess as a reader, brings you full circle through a lot of themes and a lot of characters that are usually like on the outskirts. So Lady Danbury, who I mentioned at the very beginning, she is involved in each book in a different way and in different levels. Um, for example, she's very involved in Daphne's, she's very involved in Eloise, and she's especially involved for Hyacinth. So Hyacinth really becomes close with the queen. They have a really special bond. Essentially, by the end of the book, they kind of admit that Hyacinth is like the granddaughter of the queen. Um, and they really have a beautiful, beautiful relationship, which is awesome because Hyacinth actually ends up with, spoiler alert, the grandson of the queen, the prince. So Gareth is, I'm not sure if he actually qualifies as a prince, to be honest, but now that I'm saying he's the grandson of the queen, he must be, right? I'll look into that. So Hyacinth and Gareth kind of embark on a journey of detective work because he needs her help to figure something out. He has all these family secrets. So they're kind of doing this like whole detective thing together, whole Nancy Drew. And in there, obviously they fall for each other. The whole world is trying to push them together. Um, Hyacinth's mom, Gregory's grandmother, like they all are acknowledging that they would be great together. She's sassy and she's like fast mouth and she's intelligent. And he like, instead of being pushed away by that like a lot of other guys he loves it so they're really like a good match for each other personality wise which I kind of love to see that it wasn't just a physical match like some of the other siblings you really get more into the personality aspects and that was really sweet obviously to see um but their story I love because they have like a purpose that they're serving together they have a goal and they actually spoiler alert don't get to that goal until the second epilogue. So years down the line and actually their daughter technically beats them to it. But their love story is a really beautiful one. And you know, again, there's a little bit of a different level for each kid of the society impacting the relationship. So like I said, for um, Benedict, he fell in love with a servant and that was a big decision to make to want to marry her regardless. While for Hyacinth, She's the youngest child. She probably gets the least money, even though her brothers will always take care of her. She would have to depend a lot on Gareth, who his father kind of, he's an interesting character and he essentially hates his son. Look into that. Um, and he basically gambles away all the money so that his son will get nothing. So they're kind of in an interesting situation where it's really not about stature like they're not gaining anything other than having each other so that was kind of a nice like pure romance um and i just loved how it's like through an adventure that they get together so that is the last book there is one more i haven't read it it is essentially like a recap of all the bridgertons in the future from what i understand haven't read it yet i probably will so i will let you guys know what i think when i do let me know what you guys thought of this video. It's getting pretty long, so sorry about that. My next videos will probably be about much shorter series, so maybe a three book series or some of my favorite romance books, some of my favorite sci-fi books, etc. Um, so they probably won't be this long. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, click the like, subscribe, all those buttons down below. If you didn't, that's okay, I'm gonna be back. I honestly have no idea what's gonna happen with this channel, but I figure I might as well try, right? Hey guys, thanks so much for watching part two. That's two things for today. Leave in the comments any books you recommend or want me to do a review on, and I will get that up for you next. Bye.